Hello, welcome to lesson one of CE 5361 Surface Water Hydrology. This course is uh, entirely online and so this first video is going to be somewhat uh, confusing and jumping around a lot and the purpose of that is to illustrate the resources that are available to you for this course and the resources I'll expect you to use. Okay, so the primary resource is this uh, website here and um, it, the URL is www.rtfmps.com I'll try to remember on the video to annotate that so you can uh, get to it. If you if you type that URL in, it should take you to this page that looks like this. Um, so the name of the uh, service is Atomic Kitty. There are two other Atomic Kitties out there on the internet, at least two. There's an atomickitty.ddns.net. Looks very similar to this. Um, that's the developmental website that I use to test everything before deploying on, on the RTFS, F, RTFMPS website. And there's an atomickitty.net, which I also own and operate, and that's where our share hydro environment is stored and served from. And uh, there's some blog posts here. I don't think that you need to be concerned with those. Uh, they're likely to change during the semester. The primary communication tool, other than email between us, Zoom uh, webinars, is going to be this learning management system. So I just clicked on, let me go back, I did that too fast. I'm clicking on RTFM Moodle site. And this class is CE5361 Surface Hydrology. And the a guest password is available. That lets you look at a lot of the stuff, but not everything. So each of you will be sent a user ID and a password. And I will return to this momentarily because I want to show you another uh, location. Beneath that is the words content repository. If you click on that link, uh, is the content collection. So it is more or less a copy of the learning management system site and you can choose to either look at things in in this structure or on the learning management site except the lesson completion and the homeworks and the quizzes are all on the learning management site so you can get to there through this link Moodle LMS and it'll take us back there which is what I expected and Let's take a look at the syllabus for this class. At the time of the video, here's the syllabus, and let's quickly look over it. Um, that's my email. Web content, that's correct. Um, the learning management system, that's a correct URL. And this is an incorrect URL, so don't use that. I'll need to fix that. That's our simulation environment. Uh, we have the course objectives. And the catalog description, advanced study of hydrologic cycle, abstractions, surface runoff mechanics, hydrographs, base flow separation, data analysis, reservoir and channel routing, and introduction to rainfall runoff modeling. And the purpose of this class is to examine the theory and application of hydrologic concepts, learn how to use predictive tools such as charts and computer programs. That's kind of old. I think that needs to come out. And apply these tools to the analysis and design of collection and drainage systems. Preparation of professional reports is a substantial component of this port of this course. Uh, that will be that is probably no longer a true statement for the online version. Um, you still have to prepare professional results, but uh, we'll be uploading them to a server. At the end of this course, you will have read synthesized communicated ideas in the current historical literature, delineated watersheds for maps, and determined common metrics using digital planimetry. 
perform hydrologic computations using R, perform simulation using HMS, perform H&H hydrology and hydraulic simulation using SWIM, and prepared um, professional reports for the design of a system. We'll skip the ABET program outcomes because that's actually now obsolete. I haven't got around to fixing that. And there's a disability statement and a religious holiday statement, which really doesn't make much sense because this is online and you have some um, uh, flexibility on when you can attend these lectures or listen to them. And the main prerequisite, this, this is a fluid mechanics class. And you, you need to have some uh, fluid mechanics in your background. Attendance, uh, I'll show how that's taken care of. It's, it's done on the learning management system, the Moodle server. And each of the lessons there, which is more or less a copy of the lessons on this content, has some questions in it. And you have to answer the questions. It records the answer. I believe I've programmed it so that if you make a wrong answer, it's going to um, put you back in the question so you, you can't escape it until you get the correct answer, as, at least as I have programmed the correct answer. Uh, when you get to the end of that, it'll give you a score. Since you're forced to pass, you should get really good scores. And that establishes what's considered attendance. Um, it's usually to your advantage to look on the content site and go through the PowerPoints on your own first before you go to the Learning Management System server although I have programmed it that will let you um, do a trial run. So the, the lessons are not intended to be punitive. Uh, there, there are homework assignments and quizzes. That's where the punishment will occur, but not in the lessons. Um, so student attendance will be a value. Student performance is evaluated using attendance, which is viewing the lessons online. And it, or attending Zoom meetings, so either or or both. Um, exercises, homework, and examinations, which will be administered on the server. Uh, because this is a, a short time period, uh, essentially a 26 meeting days over a four and a half week period, um, the examinations are going to just be a series of quizzes. Uh, that will be easier for me and for you. And the first one we'll go through, not in this video, but the first one I will prepare a video of how to take the quiz so you can see some of the um, administrative issues you have to accomplish, mainly how to upload your solution. Any written materials, you should do those on a word processor. Um, and if you choose to do hand computations, take photographs of those, embed them into your document, and then when you um, complete an exercise, uh, you want to upload those that exercise to the learning management server, and uh, that that constitutes turning in uh, exercises. It says 10 points. Um, everything gets normalized anyway. And the due dates are on the uh, learning management system server. Uh, there's no grace period, so what I suggest is you create a draft of the exercise, upload that as a draft, because you have to click submit twice to, to totally commit your upload. If you do it once, it's a draft and um, modify the draft as you can. You do that on your own machine and then upload the replacement. And if the due date passes and there's a draft there, the server automatically grabs that and uses that as the input. And that will at least establish partial credit for the exercise if for some reason uh, you, get, you get time limited. Um, Quizzes are open notes in the sense that I have no way to really enforce that. They're comprehensive in the sense that they include everything, but the main focus will be on whatever recent material is. 
and they're presented as a series of quizzes. The last question of every quiz will normally be an essay question where you can upload any supporting work that you did for that exam or quiz. Um, this is much harder to write than it is, and explain than it is to actually do, so don't let this scare you. And then here's the supposed uh, grading layout. So 20% of viewing the lessons, 30% on the quizzes, and half the grade is based on your exercise solutions. So you're not supposed to cheat, ever. Um, and I'm not in the business of going to a lot of trouble to find how to weed out cheaters. Um, but I'll give you some guidance on how I would become suspicious. So if I find files that have identical content, by that I mean same fonts, same writing style, stuff like that, or same logical misconstructions, that's usually a key that the file's been copied. Next thing I would do is I'll pull them off the server onto my computer and run a utility that um, compares the two files digitally and looks for differences. And if the differences are insufficient, um, I'm going to conclude that the two files, which I assume might be two different people, um, one uh, were, were copied by one or the other or done jointly. I'll just contact the people involved and try to really understand what happened. And if you jointly did the work, well then so be it. And we'll have to figure out how to uh, how to uh, divide the reward. Um, on exams, the server or quizzes, the server tells me how long you spent taking the quiz. So if you have a quiz that has 65 problems and you're only logged in for three minutes, that is an indication that you somehow watch someone else take the quiz ahead of time and you have the answers prearranged. That that's a problem because it usually takes longer than three minutes to actually toggle through all the uh, questions and read them. That's about all I can detect um, using my uh, homebrew remote control stuff here. It's best not to cheat. So you, know, you certainly are encouraged to work together and discuss things. I mean, this is like an electronic world. Uh, but be sure that any material you turn in is at some point mostly your own or acknowledge the joint work. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that too. Now here's the uh, syllabus. So this should more or less follow what the online links are and then these are the dates of the various topics. If you look at those dates, I mean that's five things a week. So you'll need to stay on top of the exercises. I believe I've got 18 exercise placeholders put up. Um, I don't want to grade that many, so we'll reduce that over time. The main uh, reading resources are Chow Made Mitten Maze. There's a copy of that on the server. Bruce Hart, uh, I would recommend the Kindle edition of his book, um, Linear Systems. Um, is on the server. Wiesman and others is on the server and then the code server notes pretty much just means my notes. Uh, and then this column shows those readings uh, but I can tell you at the time of this video this is not correct so that will be modified between now when I'm making the video and when you're watching it. Uh, the normal key I use is the asterisk in this last column. Those are code to me that at least the the uh, reading uh, page numbers are correct. So I've gone through and verified all the way up to infiltration. So these other ones are not yet correct. Uh, if there's an asterisk by it, you're pretty safe in reading that section that it goes with the topic. If there's not an asterisk by it, uh, it there's no telling where I got the numbers from. And the books I just referred, referred to are shown uh, right here. Uh, I'll show you where the reading section is in a second. Um, so 
that is one of the books that one I don't have a copy of um, so you have to buy it on Kindle it's a uh, not a bad book. I think it's forty dollars to rent and sixty to purchase. I could be wrong on those, but it's in that ballpark. Chow Mei Mint Maze. I have a copy from Taiwan. It's on the uh, server. This was uh, this is public domain, so that's on the server. And this one actually is also public domain. That's on the server. And. That may have nothing to do with this class. That's groundwater hydrology. Okay. So uh, I've just gone back in the category here called readings. Are all the uh, items and there? These are uh, cryptic uh, file names, but the uh, important ones: Chow Mei Mint and Maze. And you're probably better off downloading it. It said that it was a 23 megabyte file, and my server is currently on Quaaludes. I have a local copy, so I'll show you why you want to download it. Go to local copy, readings, Chow Mei Mint Maze, bang, done. <laughs> So this one you might want to actually download the copy to be able to refer to it. And all it is is a uh, scan a copy. I, yeah, I don't think the hyperlinks at all work. It's unfortunate. Uh, but you, you've got the page numbers and so you can um, use that to uh, find the uh, appropriate readings. Page numbers are up here and uh, that is one of the main books for the class. It is admittedly somewhat old from back in the 80s. Um, but while it's somewhat old, there's nothing necessarily obsolete about it. Um, most of the content is still quite valuable. It's worth having in your uh, toolkit. And then the other one, Linear Systems, Looks like this. And it's not the best copy in the world, but you don't have to uh, buy it yourself. So it's um, from the 70s, actually documents some of the, what today would be comparatively early history of, hyd of computational hydrology. So this is a useful book. Okay, so I just went to my local copies because they were faster to load. Oh, look, that one's there now. And get back to the right place. This must be it. Yeah. So there's the readings directory. Um, there's some other ones here. Just get an idea of this two megabyte file at my house, and that's taken a one and a two and a three and a three and a half. I've had very poor internet with the uh, mandated stay stay at home policy for everybody. Puts an awful lot of load on the consumer side of the internet and the internet service providers have no incentive to provide the service. So these are the kind of readings that are available to you. Um, okay, so we've done syllabus. Here's a Description looks like it's the syllabus. This has the prerequisites. So, graduate students, um, undergraduates are by permission. You should have had a university course in fluid mechanics, hydrology, environmental engineering. 
and have some familiarity with computer programming. So a MATLAB, a Python, an Excel VBA R class would be useful. We'll do our best to, if it is really new to you, teach you as we go. And the uh, software that will be, this is this statement, Excel will not be used extensively. R will be used. It's supposed to say heck HMS and swim. Ooh, that bad move. And now we'll go on to the lessons. So the lesson content uh, looks like this. And they're grouped in the groups that are the same topical groups as on the Moodle server. Um, so the one we're in right now is introduction. And if you go into introduction, there's lesson materials. And they're all laid out pretty much the same. There'll be a PowerPoint. If there is any data, when you take the data link, it will show data. There is no data for this one. If there's any spreadsheets, this, this one has a script associated with it, and then the video link. And if there's special readings, there'll be links to the readings down here. Oh, I guess it should stay there. So we can go, I actually want to go back to the uh, Moodle site. There we go. Okay, so let's go to our surface water hydrology Moodle leak site. And um, I, of course, have a password, but we could also log in as a, as a guest. I hope this still works. Hmm, slowing down. Okay, the guest password is right here. So I don't even feel like typing. Cool. All right, so here are the uh, layouts. Um, so here's lesson one. And if you're in the Moodle site, um, this almost looks like what the student view looks like. In the student view, you have some more material over here, and there's actually one that's pretty important. So I think I'm going to log in. And I have a fake student named James Bond. His password. It's shaken, not stirred. Log it in. And with any luck, we will uh, get there and uh, good, all the progress counters are off. So let's go through lesson one as if you were a student. So you click on the lesson thing and it tells you you've completed 0% of the lesson and it starts with the first slide. So we have a surfer riding a nice wave in some place which has desert-like conditions right up to the coast. So surfing then the shores of Namibia, somewhere in uh, southwestern Africa. I have no idea where the picture is. It's just a cool picture. And you notice I clicked next page, and what it will do is present the next slide. And in this case, it discusses what our class is about, surface water hydrology, modeling concepts, model applications. The hydrology will be on the processes of rainfall, evaporation, soil infiltration, runoff, and snow melt. We're not going to spend much on snow melt. Um, and then the modeling concepts discuss input data, uncertainty, lumped and distributed modeling, and estimating parameters, and any sensitivity analysis. And then for applications, we're going to use HMS and SWIM. Um, kind of explore how each of these processes is represented in these um, computer programs. And then we'll do an example. And then the computer programs are different. SWIM has, in my opinion, superior hydro hydraulics modeling capabilities than HMS does, and adequate hydrology, whereas HMS by far shines in the hydrology part, but the routing part is pretty primitive.
Nevertheless, they're both good tools. And then now I'll start with what we mean by hydrology. It's a study of the occurrence, circulation, storage, and distribution of surface and groundwater of the earth. And you notice the navigations here down at the bottom, next page, previous, beginning. We don't want to go to the beginning. We can get tired of going back to the beginning by accident. Next topic is what is a watershed. So watershed is the fundamental unit in surface hydrology. And it's a topographic area that collects and discharges uh, stream flow to an outlet or a mouth, also called the pore point. It's also an area on the surface of the earth that drains to a specific location. So a watershed in an urbanized area could literally be a parking lot that drains to, an, to a, a storm sewer inlet. There's a similar concept in, in groundwater called a groundwater basin. The fundamental difference between a groundwater basin and a watershed is in groundwater, the boundaries uh, have the potential for moving depending on relative rates of recharge and discharge. And watershed surficial topography doesn't change fast enough for that to be an issue on surface modeling or surface uh, water hydrology. So we click next page and defines a hydrologic system and here you see this reference here CMM page 5 that means chow maven maze so where possible these topics are linked back to one or more of the readings and the mandatory hydrologic cycle picture so here's the hydrologic cycle from a scientific perspective. We have um, bodies of water and the sun provides energy to drive the evaporation process. As the, as the water vapor rises, it gets to a certain height and forms clouds. And then the big blowy face wind god pushes the clouds on shore, and when they get far enough on shore, the water falls out of the clouds as precipitation, snow, sleet, ice, rain, hits the land. Uh, some of this falling water evaporates back to the cloud. Uh, other water gets uh, infiltrated and is transpired by plants. And then what's left becomes overland runoff. Eventually it collects into rivulets goes on into streams, makes its way into a river, maybe stops in a lake for a few years, and at least as drawn here, eventually gets back out to the ocean. There's a subsurface component where it gets past this infiltration zone into the uh, groundwater system and works its way out to the ocean to evaporate and continues cycling around and around and around. And there's numerous... Um, versions of pictures like this. This is just one I happen to choose. So in that same picture what I've done is I've highlighted the surface component in red and I'm including a portion of the infiltration zone as part of the uh, surface system. So there's a component of the, of the water that making its way into the soil removes it, apparently removes it from overland runoff, but that water can still make its way to these streams and appears as runoff, so it never quite makes it to the groundwater system. And that's the surface water system, and I think there's a groundwater picture which is going to have everything else highlighted. Sure enough, here's the groundwater component shown here and uh, it's extending into the third dimension into the uh, drawing. So that's our two components of general terrestrial hydrology, surface component, subsurface component. If we were to draw it as a system diagram we might do something as simple as this and if you look at the uh, Linear Systems 1973 book you'll see diagrams that this looks a lot like. Not surprisingly because that's where I took the diagram from. I drew this one myself. So we have this boundary here 
out here in this white zone would be the uh, cloud, not the internet cloud, the atmosphere. So water comes out of the atmosphere, is we're showing it as rainfall, and it comes into the surface system. There's also evapotranspiration from the surface system to the atmosphere. There's a surface water inflow component, groundwater inflow, surface water outflow, groundwater outflow, and no distinction is made in this diagram of what water does between the surface and subsurface systems. So this, this block is just a, think of it as a watershed, representative of a watershed system block. Actually a piece of a watershed system block since we have these inflows. And we can examine that block using a water budget or a hydrologic balance. And all it is is a um, conservation of mass. So it's simply the conservation of mass in hydrologic terms for a hydrologic system. It's usually done as a rate or a volume balance. Um, you got to be aware when you're doing it whether you're talking rates or volumes because that matters, especially if you mix the two. And it's the fundamental tool that helps us describe the amounts of water in storage in different compartments at different scales. And as seemingly simple as it is, a water budget computation is actually pretty valuable in both hydrologic science and in uh, engineering practice, namely because you can do it without much resources, um, you know, unless you run out of envelopes to write on the back of then you have a problem. But if you have envelopes uh, that have backs to them so that you can do back of envelope calculation, um, you literally can do water budgets on a piece of paper with at most the calculator on your phone. And it's remarkable that on the scale they're applicable for, they're amazingly accurate. So if you have a water budget of, oh, for instance, Lubbock, Texas surface system, it's going to be pretty good at bulk prediction of behavior. And we use that a lot in computational hydrology to check that our more elaborate methodologies that we use kind of make sense. Because if the elaborate model says that there's going to be 40 million acre feet per year leaving it, and our water budget model says there's going to be 4 million acre feet per year leaving a location, that's a tenfold difference in estimation. One of those is incorrect. And it's more likely the elaborate model because of it has many places to make mistakes. So water budget is never a waste of time. And I'm going through, I'm not intending to go through it this slowly, but we're uh, kind of limited by how fast the server's providing it. And here's the water budget written as a rate equation, where I is the inflow, O is the outflow. And the way this is written here, this is inflow, change in inflow with respect to time. So that's inflow rate, outflow rate equals change in storage rate, and plus a generated rate. And I only left the generated term here to make it consistent with how we do it in our uh, environmental engineering chemical processes class. Generally in water we don't we don't we ignore this generation term. Um, if you look in at equation 224 in child maidment and maze, except for the notation and the absence of internal generation, the equations are identical. And that's not by accident. I mean the water budget is that is that simple and uh, universal. So we'll go back to my system diagram and we'll rip the surface water system out of the diagram. Once we cut off the groundwater system, we now have to have linkages so the surface system can send water to groundwater and take water from groundwater. And so I'm calling that surface water discharge, surface water recharge. That is our entire surface water system at the system level. Inflow of rain, um, any external inflows from other basins, 
evapotranspiration going out, leakage to the groundwater system going out, any leakage from the groundwater system back coming in, finally surface water going out. And if we can balance all those arrows, we can get good understanding of the hydrology of an area of interest. And using that system diagram, some appropriate examples of budget uh, of those arrows. Rainfall, um, evaporation, surface water leaving boundary, infiltration, and water levels and lengths for storage. Storage is remarkably ignored, but it's actually pretty important. And we'll look at that later on. And then here's the groundwater system for completeness. So that surface water discharge gets renamed when it gets to the subsurface as groundwater recharge. And that surface water recharge is actually coming from groundwater discharge. So the words have been invented for job security reasons. Be sure that hydrologists can remain employed even when they're working at home. Ooh, that was cynical. And groundwater budget, we can explain the arrows in that with uh, these bullet items here. And then we go back to the integrated system. Um, so when we when we tore it apart, we created these these red communication paths. And so when we push it back together, that all shrinks down and it just becomes one block again. Okay, so this is why I wanted to go through the lesson in this fashion. So as you're proceeding with this and other lessons, you're presented with uh, questions like this. And um, you have to answer it, submit it, and complete it to move on and complete the lesson and receive acknowledgement that you suffered through my uh, terrible slides. So it's saying the figure below is, and this is the figure, and the computer has very poor understanding of below. Um, but here we have a figure, it looks like some kind of a bucket with a little outlet. There's a portion that infiltrates, has some storage capacity measured in millimeters, evapotranspiration going out, precip coming in, and runoff going out. And then we're asked some questions. Is this a conceptual model of a groundwater system? Well, we have surface runoff, so I would say no. Um, is it a schematic of a lumped, of lumped and distributed modeling? It's like we have, we haven't even talked about that, so I would also go no. Is it a collection of connected components that form the hydrologic cycle? Almost, but no. Is it a schematic of the occurrence, circulation, storage, and distribution of waters in the earth? No. And so the only thing left is this is a conceptual model of a surface water system. We select that answer, click submit. If we get it right, it will tell us that and it allows us to continue. We'll, we'll get this one wrong on purpose. So you can see the recycling. So I'd say that that's a picture of an integrated hydrology, hydrology and hydraulics model. Although I fully well know it's the topographic area that collects and discharges stream throw. And if you select an incorrect one, it goes no. And you can go on to the next question, accept your failure, or you can try again. You get 10 tries at everything, which should be enough in a four quest in a multiple choice four question problem to get it right. At the worst case, you should uh, only have to do four attempts unless you forget your answer. Yay! So we continue. Definition of hydrology is the study of the occurrence, circulation, distribution of water on the surface of the earth. And, uh-oh, this one has numbers. So now we, um, this can be done on a, uh, you could do this on, those, on that proverbial envelope back, but I have a reason for this. So, uh, let's say we need to do calculations and for some reason, okay, we'll make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah. 
Oh no, that's the slide I'm at. I don't want to do that. There we go. We can go to the Share Hydro site. So what this is is a simulation site that contains several programs already pre-built. Um, each of you will get, uh, there's currently five portals. I only have two on the link right now. Each of you will get credentials to log into uh, your own um, Share Hydro location. And the advantage of that is all your work is stored on a remote server, so you don't have to worry about losing stuff. You also don't have to worry about cluttering up your home machinery with software that you may not use afterwards. Share Hydro One, okay. So I type the password, which is VNC pound O and E. I'll send it, and if the server's up and running, which thank heavens it is for this example. Must have been here already earlier. Okay, so here's what the uh, remote site looks like. If you're familiar with Linux, this is a Linux desktop. And Swim has already been pre-installed. So I just double clicked on that launcher that says Launch Swim. And there's our swim thing coming up. We don't actually need that for this problem. I just wanted to show you where it is. And Heck HMS. It takes a little longer to load, especially if I didn't double click it. So it's pre-installed. And the reason I went here is to run an RStudio implementation. Now all these you can install on your home machines if you want. And um, I guess I would sort of actually encourage that. But I'm trying to move this because I want to resize my window. There we go. And the lagginess you're seeing me experience, you will experience it too, depending on the internet connectivity at the time you're on the site. I'm moving some stuff out of the way. So I have this water budget example already worked out in Excel. But this class, I'm trying to exclusively use the three packages I just showed you. So we will kill that example and we have a two month period in Wales we have precipitation coming in evaporation leaving infiltration we're told that there's negligible storage in the catchment we want to figure out what runoff is so What we should do is we're going to create a new file, and this is um, water budget example. And we're going to want to save the file. We're going to want to save the file. This file, I think I can just do save, and then I'll go ahead and point it to the correct directory. So where we want to put it is on our desktop, R scripts, my R scripts, and we want to create a Oh, let me do that. How do I create a new folder? Oh, there it is. So we click up here to create new folder. And this is lesson one. File name.
some name like that. That should do the job. And it's now saved and we can actually change our working directory to the source file location and down here it should Show the working directory desktop R scripts, my R scripts, lesson one scripts, which is correct. So now we can um, produce our water budget, and by all means, R is definitely overkill for this problem, but let's go ahead and complete it anyway. So we have precipitation. Go ahead and we will assign that object a value 254 millimeters. Um, 85 millimeters. I uh, actually typed evaporation. It should be evapotranspiration, but I don't want to type that many letters. Infiltration, we're told, is 20 millimeters. Zero millimeters, and then we want to get runoff. Oh, my little cat's helping me. Is it mercy? You want to do some typing? Or you just want to chase Dusty around? And actually, I don't know the answer for runoff. That's what we want to calculate. So that's our information that we have. We also have storage is zero. That is a uh, comment symbol. We have the catchment area. is 65 and that's in kilometers squared. Now we'll do some unit conversions. I think we want to put everything into cubic into meters and cubic meters so um, precipitation is equal to itself multiplied by um, one meter is a thousand millimeters so a thousand millimeters is one meter so it's one divided by a thousand doing that new math right there one divided by one one two three Okay, so that gets us into meters, and then um, equal to itself. And infiltration. Equal 
it to itself. One over a thousand. So those are now in the right units, but they still are not volumes. Those are now meters over the two month period. So now we're going to need to uh, put them into uh, correct uh, volumes, but first we want to get the catchment area. into correct units, so it's equal to itself. Now, uh, 65 kilometers squared, there are a thousand meters per kilometer. So this is gonna be 1,000 per kilometer times 1,000 per kilometer. And because of the internet lag, it missed, it didn't pick up the input. And that red X is telling me I have a syntax error, which is now fixed. Okay, so everything is in the correct length units. And now we have to um, compute storage. And we can, well, actually, storage is known to be zero. We want to compute runoff. So we apply the hydrologic budget equation. Runoff. by definition is precipitation minus evaporation minus infiltration minus so that is our spelling counts minus storage. That's our uh, water budget. That's going to be in meters. And so we will stop right there. And I'm going to save everything. And I will highlight the stuff I just typed, possibly within my lifetime even. And it will not behave because of internet connectivity lag. I do not know what just happened. Edit, undo. There we go. So everything I just highlighted in blue, when I select run, it's going to attempt to run those calculations from the top down. And I believe it took the input. Did now if we want to look at the contents of runoff. Point one four nine meters or 149 millimeters. And now we want to figure what, we actually go back to the question, what is the runoff in cubic meters? So not the runoff in, um, so we have 0.149 meters of runoff. So these are in a uh, unit that's called a uh, watershed length. And so we need to multiply that value by the catchment area 
to get the runoff volume in total. Should be 9.6 million. So 9.685 million meters cubed of runoff. So let me go ahead and say, oh, it's already saved. And the reason it's actually worth the trouble to do this seemingly asinine approach is what if the storage changes? To get the storage change, all we have to do is rerun everything which I just did, and we'll just retype the runoff times catchment area. And we get a different value. So that And we discovered a nice syntax um, actually let's try it again So apparently a uh, storage of 11 um, somehow uses up all the rain. That does not make any sense to me. Eighty-five plus twenty is a uh, hundred and five. Ah, I see my uh, error of my ways. I have storage in the wrong unit still. We'll fix that right here. And that's um, the kind of uh, thinking um, you'll be having to employ later on in the course as you're making your own um, tools for specific processes. And then we'll compare those to HMS and SWIM. You'll probably conclude that those are easier to use tools for a lot of things. But the ability to do this on your own is vital to getting a good understanding of computational hydrology. Okay, storage, I want to do it of 10. Go down here. We type in that and still doesn't do it right. What did I do wrong? I already called in the question my entire understanding of water budgets. Not really. I part of the issue I'm having is the really slow response of the okay, so precip twenty eight thousand. Okay, one more try. So I expect it to be, let's see, 139, somewhere around 8 million. Okay, yeah, 9 million, somewhere around 8 million. Okay, well, let's return to the problem. We want 9.6 million. 
If we look back here and do we have 9.6 million as a choice? We sure do. And I, I agree with you, it would have been faster to do it on a piece of paper. But the uh, wanted you to be aware of the um, tool that's available. And so here it has the correct response. Recharge is precipitation minus ET minus infiltration minus storage, which is zero. 149 millimeters of watershed depth. And here was the conversions from 149 millimeters watershed depths over a thousand millimeters per meter times 65 square kilometers times a million meters squared per kilometer squared is 9.6 million meters and our last one uh, which I think will finally finish the lesson is this you'd be presented with questions like this this is pretty much a uh, somewhere between a hidden in plain sight and who's buried in Grant's tomb kind of question. So we have a picture. I have no idea what the point of the picture is. It must have something to do with hydrology. There's a snow cap up here. There's a dam here and a river and some stuff. Evapotranspiration. This must be some kind of hydrologic cycle. And we're told conceptual model hydrologic cycle for developed environment, conceptual model hydrologic cycle for natural environment. At first glance, it's hard to tell, but we have an urban area with an impervious parking lot. We have a dam with a channel river. So this must, the best is, this must be a developed environment. Certainly at the scale here with snow-capped mountains, it's hard to really make that claim, but that's the best choice of the two answers. Choose it, and we're done. Okay, so at this point, when we press continue, we should be completed with the lesson. And we are. Okay, your current grade is 100 out of 100. You've completed 100% of the lesson. And we'll go back to the main category. And you'll see here that it was a green check mark that the computer automatically detected we had completed the lesson. And so um, we can move on. And that's uh, how you'll use the Moodle site. Here's an example of a quiz, which I will won't necessarily commit to. Um, so the quizzes have rather long time periods. Uh, the point being, if you if you start it, you got to finish it. So once you have plenty of time to do so. And I believe this quiz has a series of water budget applications. I don't know if I've coded this as a one try only quiz, so I don't think I'm going to actually attempt it. I will just do a bad job on it since James Bond actually uh, knows. And wait for it to render all the pretty mathematics that it does. Um, so this is telling us there's five questions. We have three hours to finish the attempt. And we have two and a half meters in, five in, four out. And we basically want to do another water budget analysis. So we could conceivably go back to our, our R script to do that, but I'm going to guess the annual evaporation amount is 600. I'm really pulling that out of my data. I have no idea what it is. So I press check and it said nope. And it's going to go, then it gives us a whole bunch of correct answer. And I don't believe you get to actually change the answer. So be sure that you have a pretty good idea what you think the answer is. Um, James is going to do poorly on this quiz. It should be showing a figure, referring to a figure, but it doesn't, so... I will have to get that fixed. doing badly. 
that's the figure that's supposed to render here. So I need to repair that. And this is its way of saying the internet's running slow and we've been spending a lot of time trying to steal your money. You don't have any readily available. So if that happens, we'll just have to start over. Um, that's going to conclude this video, lesson one. And when you get done, remember to log out. and exit the uh, site. The easiest way is just there we go and I'll close that. Now when you're done with your shared server you want to remember to exit that too and the way to do that go ahead and close the um, script and over here on this left side is this funny looking tab thing if you click on it you have some options the option we're going to choose is disconnect but one other option that's important see the setting I have is remote resizing so when you first log on it's not going to be very big you want to go to the setting and set the scaling to uh, remote resizing I don't know what local scaling does nothing in this case but to disconnect is this button disconnect and when you're disconnected it looks like this at this point you can actually either return or you can uh, close off that particular tab on your browser so that completes the video for lesson one of CE 5361 and um, we will have the video call and try to address any other questions that, uh, that come up uh, relative to this lesson. So thank you for your attention and have a good day.